Hello everyone, I am Alice Gonzalez, a trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and welcome to the July 2022 Power BI update. We're gonna go over five of the changes the Power BI team has put in place this month. There are a lot more, but we just picked five of the ones I personally like the best to cover for you. Also, I'll have linked below the entire documentation from Microsoft with everything else that they have worked on this month because it's a lot. So let's get into it. All right, so first up, error bars are now generally available. You can see that they put a lot of new capabilities in this month to really make this feature a lot more robust. Um, we've got data labels in here that we can now see around those error bars, which is really cool to be able to see that really easily. Um, we can also enable in our data label card for the formatting pane. Um, we can go and change our font style, the color, um, and just like you can with regular data labels really easy to do. You can also match the series color as well, which allows you to color those error labels with the color of their associated data series. Really good update with that one. And I'm also going to demo that out for you at the end of the video in Power BI. So people actually see that in action. Next one with our good old Azure map here, there is now a filled map layer so before we used, we have bubbles on there, but now we also have a filled map layer. It's a really good one to try to add in if you have some other issues with maps in your organization, potentially be able to use the Azure map for this. I'll also demo this one out in Power BI so we can see exactly how this works, all the different ways you can enable this and different things you can use inside of the Azure map to get that all set up and ready to go. Guess what, y'all, there's a new DAX function. I'm excited about this one. It is network days. So net work days. First, when I first read, I was thinking network days, what are we networking? But it is net work days. And so this function will return the number of whole working days between two days. And so I'm also going to demo out, show you exactly how this works. We'll go through each of these scenarios in Power BI so you can see what the structure is, how we need to be writing things, what we can add in and change that we can add in weekends. It's going to default with your weekends as Saturday, Sunday. But what if your weekends Friday, Saturday, or maybe your weekend is Wednesday, Thursday, you can modify that. I'll show you how. Also, we can add in holidays as well. So we're going to be putting in some parameters and adding in these variables. All right, and this month you'll also notice that you can now easily get in to data marts through get data. Really easy, you can into that get data menu in Power BI. You can look at it from the Power Platform section, get in through there. We can then see the data marts in there. You can also just search all for data marts either way to get into that. Once you do get into that, you have two different ways you can connect. You can connect with an auto-generated data set where you're connecting to the data marts underlying auto-generated data set using Live Connect. Or other option, you can connect to a SQL endpoint. So you're connecting to the data mart SQL endpoint using either direct query or import, and you can build data sets or reports from there. So some different options there. So if you're using data marts, you can check those out. Another update that they did kind of on menu panes for us was in app source. So when you are looking in app source for some of those great custom visuals to really spice up and liven up your reports, it is now easier and quicker to find those visuals based on the new sections that they've put into that. I would still personally always suggest if you are doing a search for that, keeping your filter set to all when you're searching, but definitely they have made it a little bit easier to find things in this search filter panel. Previously, I would never bother using it. I would just search for whatever I needed, but these actually have made it a lot easier. So worth a look over there to check out the different sections that they now have added for that. All right, let's go hop over into Power BI, look at a few of these things in a little bit more depth so we can actually play around to see how they look in real time in Power BI. All right, here we are in the Power BI desktop, and I do have the July 
release on here. And first thing that we're gonna look at is error bars. And so I have this line chart added in. I've got some calendar here as well as sales amount loaded in for this. And I have enabled error bars on this visual. Let me show you how you can do that. So I always will forget that this <laughs> magnifying glass has these great analytics in here. And that is where we are going for our error bars. So click on the magnifying glass, open these up, and then right here at the bottom is error bars. We're gonna open that up and we can now in our options, where you're gonna turn it on, we can decide the type that we want. So by field, percentage, percentile, or standard deviation, you can change those around, play around with that, see what works best for your data. We can also set our upper and lower bounds. So if we want this to be higher or lower, you can modify that in here. Next, in our bar, this is where we are able to change this line right here, that bar. So if I turn that off, you can see we no longer have that error bar, turn it on. I'm able to modify the color on this if I want to change that around. Anything I want to do with that, can modify that color here. We can make our width large and make that really stand out. We can also change our marker shape. So that top and bottom icon at the top and bottom of our line, we are able to modify that. So you got a lot of great details in here really depending on what the look and feel of things you want to have. You can also decide if we want a border color and what color that border is. If we have that, so if we bump up our white border, you can see it's kind of right around the edge. Makes that stand out a little bit more. And with our error band, I have this off. You can leave it on. I like it. I think it helps you visualize, especially if you have a lot of points over a wide area. You can really see the difference a little bit easier. That's the goal, right? With any visualization that we're doing, we want it to visually be as easy to intake this information. So I personally love an error band. I think it makes it a little bit easier to understand and really process that information. But you are able to turn that off and turn it on here and change your band color style, all that good stuff from fill to line as well as fill and line right in here as well as change your transparency, make that darker or lighter, whatever you need with your data. We also have error labels that we can turn on as well. You can see if we turn that off, that's taking off. I personally am a fan of labels, make it a little bit easier to understand, but if you don't want the labels, maybe have a lot of data points, it's getting a little bit crowded, definitely suggest keeping this tooltip on. So this is a tooltip when it is on, you can see we're getting upper sales amount as well as lower. So you're getting all of those three points in the tooltip. If I turn that tooltip off, then this is the only thing that we're getting. We're only seeing that sales amount. So if you do have a lot of data points and it's just a bit crowded to have the error labels on, I would definitely suggest keeping the tool tip on. So that way you're seeing those numbers even if you just have too many points here to have actually all of them out. So if you can't do both error labels and tool tip, make sure you have at least one to easily show that data. Let's now take a look at the Azure map. So moving on in to look at our Azure map. I have the Azure map right here loaded and if you do not have that you can go over to file options and settings options and then in your preview features you want to make sure you are turning that azure map visual on so this still is in preview mode right here but definitely add that in to take advantage of using it and trying it out reminder if you add anything into or from your preview features. As soon as you hit okay, you will be reminded you need to restart Power BI. So save your file, close it out, reopen it, and you will be good to go on here. All right, so we have our Azure map selected. I can see I have states loaded in for my data with states and provinces as well. We've got some global data in here. Moving in to my formatting pane, we now have a filled map layer. So I have this on previously, turn that off. We could use our bubble layer. 
which handy, helpful, we can see that, but it's great that we can now use this Azure map as a filled map layer. So getting into the filled map options, you can see with our shape, we can set our transparency. Remember, 100% is clear. We can see nothing. And then 0% full color. You can see nothing behind that. So you can adjust your transparency as needed here. Next up in colors, you can either set these by default colors. So you can choose exactly which one you want everything to be, or we can do some conditional formatting on here, which is how I envision a lot of you will end up using this. So with our conditional formatting, of course you can set this up. I'll have it set with gradient. You can pick your lowest value and your highest value. I'm just gonna modify this color just a little bit because I personally don't love a red to green transition, but you can pick the colors you would like in here. You can match your theme, whatever you need, want to do. We'll hit okay. We can see that loads up now we are getting each of our state promises colors adjusted based on that conditional formatting that we set up. We can also modify our border. Maybe we love a dark border. Maybe we do not. So we can easily change this around, get that look and feel that you'd like. We can also modify the transparency of that border and set that border width in here. All right, it is time now. Let's check out that new DAX function. All right, so reminder of kind of the setup for this. I have these written out as well over here. So using this first one with our working days, you can see that we've just named it the same working days, but we are using our new network days formula here. We are pulling through the date. Here's how we're structuring that as well as our end date. So we're using October of 2022 and going from October 1st through October 30th, there are 20 working days. However, if we switch that up and if we decide, all right, our weekend is no longer Saturday, Sunday, we actually had a shift, now we're gonna do Friday and Saturday instead, we would be you looking at it this way instead, and we're referencing this seven. Now, let me just show you on our next screen, I have a calendar already set up for us. We can easily check this out as we're looking at all of our points. We can see, looking at this, the seventh is our, the Friday, and that is going to change the day that we are seeing. So our first formula that we have, which is just working days, we see it's pulling in 20 working days. So from the first through the 30th, we have five, 10, 15, 20. With this one right here, where we are including or rather changing our weekend to Friday and Saturday, we now have five, 10, 15, 21. So remember, we're cutting it off at the 30th rather than the 31st. So we get 21 by setting our weekend date. And then the last one where we're actually able to add in holidays, see added in a variable where we're bringing in two holidays. We're gonna say, all right, you know what? The third and the fourth also are holidays. So in that same time frame of the first through the 30th, with us starting our weekend on the 7th, so Friday and Saturday, plus two holidays, now we're getting 19 days. So the same as the 21st one before, it's just minus those two holidays. So I can see this coming in handy a lot, especially if you're processing things, looking at a lot of data related to potentially payroll, all that working time, all that good stuff. Here is great formula, really easy to use, set up, accurate, definitely test it out see how it goes. Let me know in the comments below if you are using this, have you tried it out, um, and how that goes. But really handy, really easy to set up. Again, you can set that up with this structure. You're setting your first date and your last date. It's always gonna default to Saturday, Sunday as your weekend, but you can adjust the day that that starts on. Then you can also add in or rather subtract 
holidays from that as well. All right, thank you all so much for joining me in this update to Power BI. So to learn more and see all of those other awesome features that were added this month, I will link the Microsoft blog below with all of those details. I swear that team does not sleep. There are so many new updates every single month. So I showed you my favorites. Let me know in the comments below which feature you are most excited about this month. Also, please don't forget to like this video and click subscribe so you make sure you don't miss out on any of our videos when we release them. I will see you in a few weeks to talk about the August 2022 release, whatever amazing new things that team has for us then.